We always thought that the last ice age was 10,000 years ago. Despite global warming, there's one descending upon us right now. Inequality, both social and economic. Conflict based on identities and ecological brinkmanship are defining the coming of the next ice age. With one of the largest youth populations in the world, it's a no-brainer. Young people have to be involved in solving the challenging paradoxes that humankind faces today. Getting youth inspired to engage is not an easy task. I can tell you this because we have been working in the field of youth-centric development for three decades now. We are Vartalip, a cross-sectoral coalition with more than 150 youth-engaging organizations. And we facilitate self-to-society journeys towards the vision Every youth a Jagrik, every space nurturing Jagriks. Today, we have become well-known faces of youth-centric development. But this journey hasn't been easy. We had to go through our share of pain. We made countless mistakes that we later learned from. In fact, not long ago, we came together to talk about these mistakes and our learnings led us to draw out certain indispensable principles of youth-centric development. These principles took us decades to frame, but could perhaps help you avoid the same failures, help you learn from our pain and reach meaningful change faster than we could. To learn from mistakes, the first thing we have to admit is, it's not working. I will stop talking now and introduce you to seven of our friends committed community leaders and dynamic youth workers. Each of their journeys is a testament to the diverse communities they work in and their own challenges in the ever-evolving youth workspace. Each journey unfolding mistakes and learning that led us to adopt a root principle of our work. Let's begin with one of the most intense current issues of our time, COVID-19. This is the story of Commutiny, the Youth Collective. Kanika Sinha has been working in the youth development space for over 18 years. She is the convener of Commutiny, the Youth Collective, and facilitates this collaborative ecosystem of 150 youth engaging organizations. In spite of the vast experience of the coalition, they were still floundering at the time of COVID-19. COVID-19 ka jo second wave tha, uh, this is the summer of 2021 and uh, we know how that crisis exploded, right? The fact that people weren't getting beds in hospitals, oxygen ki kami, absolutely unbelievable, something we uh, couldn't have fathomed or bilkul bhi hum prepared nahi the is tarah ki crisis ke liye. Aur uh, ye wo samay tha jab humare ecosystem ke chitne bhi log the, young people, youth workers, leaders of organizations, donors ho ya civil society organizations ke heads ho corporate mein ho but everyone jumped in uh, roz yahi koshish thi ki kisi tarah ek aur jaan bach jaye kisi ko bed mil jaye kisi ko khana mil jaye i'm sure we must have reached thousands of people there were food packets that went out there were covid care kits that went out uh, as i said oxygen cylinders um, and yet you know hum jitna jitna bada hamara ecosystem hai aur jo hamara uh, which is our ecosystem uh, and potential, hai, uh, I don't think we were quite there yet and we all knew that. Each one of us uh, was experiencing this, you know, there was a disconnect, there was isolation, there was anxiety, uh, there was grief, there was despair, hopelessness. Kisi ko nahi pata tha, isse kab Studies showed that as many as 90% of people displayed signs of depression. They were stuck at home, grieving, anxious, and couldn't meet their friends or family. Well-being was far from well. And I think the mistake here was that uh, we weren't really seeing what was happening around us. Uh, we thought we could continue saving lives without addressing the well-being crisis uh, that was unfolding, particularly among young people. And that's the constituency that we work with. Actually, we do what we do. Actually, we work with them. Actually, we unke sath unke self pe aur us wajah se bahut alag alag tareeqon se hamesha se unke well being pe hum kaam karte aaye to kyun ab hum well being ke bare mein bhul gaye and that's when we sort of paused 
and we regrouped and together the stable the well-being intervention that we designed was a journey jiske through log apni hi salamati aur apne well-being ka charge khud le sake you know the experience allowed them to recognize to label what they were feeling but also gave them tools to be able to switch those feelings and move out of those adverse feelings the beauty was that it was an intergenerational experience क्योंकि ये वेल बींग मेरे अकेले की बात नहीं है लोगों से जुड़ा हुआ है एंड दैट इंटर जेनरेशनल एक्सपीरियंस विथ योर ओन फैमिली मेम्बर्स विथ एजुकेटर्स विथ दोज इन योर कम्युनिटी मेरे दैट मच मोर पावरफुल एंड दैट सेंस ऑफ बिलोंगिंग एंड सेंस ऑफ कलेक्टिव वेल बींग इज वॉट इमर्ज फ्रॉम दिस जर्नीज These well-being interventions helped young people move from adverse feelings to positive ones. By the end, they were able to galvanize a large ecosystem response towards relief and recovery. Uh our COVID response uh, initiative usko humne saat nirbhar bola. Uh interdependence and that's really what that period was about. We were able to reach uh, almost 6 and a half lakh people. with the relief work that we were doing but also with these well-being interventions uh, that was much more sort of attuned to what we thought we had the potential to do in addressing and honoring the feelings of young people we were able to meet our strength and our potential as a coalition this is the story of the flowing principles seven mistakes that took us somewhere honoring the feelings of the youth is our first insight To know about our other insights watch the other 6 films